Thank you so much. My name is Erika, and this is Alex. Um, Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming. And I believe in my husband because it's incredible to actually be part of, to be a beekeeper. Beekeeping is not just um, having uh, little creatures around you. They are incredible. If we would actually implement to our life their daily basis, we would not have a problem. The colony is just perfect. What they do and how they, how they live, um, it's really, really mesmerizing me. Why is that? Because everything what they do is um, connected with the nature, of course, and they um, do not sacrifice um, nothing as just um, getting together and do everything together. What this little group does, this is what they do in a bigger version. So every single time when Alex is showing me what's happening in the brooding box, when all of the action happens, I just feel like, how can I share it with people? How can I actually show it to people? That's how we should live. Connected and care for each other. Okay, so that's one thing. Another thing what they do, they do not make mistakes. Every single stuff what they're creating is basically used for the humans. I'm holding something incredible. It's called propolis. I'm not pretty sure you heard about propolis. Propolis, they glue, how they're gluing together um, they hives so they can actually keep out the nasties and, and all of the germs. Um, also, that's how they actually um, 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 cleaning the building box as well. So we're actually creating um, drops from that. The sickness, what basically we are sort of kind of come upon, this is the best defense for everybody. So if anybody knows somebody who has COVID or, or any um, lung issues, this is the best thing. Couple of drops a day keeps the doctor away. So um, we actually do it in um, uh, alcohol, 92% minimum we need it. Um, and you need to keep it in two to three weeks and after then just drain it and it's like a, a cold. Highly recommended. So I put my husband through because basically he got the knowledge, I got the passion. <laughs> Hi, and then again. When we heard those three little fighters, we come to the right place and we went to Canberra twice. One those time when uh, Epic was open. How many of you was in Canberra? Who did the Canberra trip? Uh, then you were appealing, we, we experienced that. All right, back to the beekeeping. Uh, we can talk about bees forever. I'm just wondering, what's the question do you have? What would you like to know about bees? And I'm just waiting for some questions before I can go into it. Most likely the worst year, the worst year ever in beekeeping. And we can blame so many things. You know, some people say the weather, something in the rain, because the bush just wasn't, wasn't flaring for so long. You know, we had a couple hundred kilo honey, and at this stage we usually have a few tons. And uh, <coughs> some beekeepers say weather modification, some some people saying something in the rain is a stop all the above. Yeah, all the we're not sure, I can not play because I'm, I'm not sure, but we can guess if something wrong out there. Are they, are they improving now? Uh, is it improving? It's improving now. It's, it's something happened, you know, the, the, the sun can start flaring, then they can collect honey. It wasn't a problem with the pollen. It was a problem with the, with the nectar. We couldn't collect any nectar for so long. It was, it was a year when we started extracting honey in July, and we just about ready now to take some honey out of the house. 
Yeah. Fellow beekeepers, it's the same story. Yeah. People, yeah. Yeah. This is not just us, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, everywhere we're going, or we're actually having a group, uh, we're talking about this with everybody. Um, last year, we had to actually send honey to our parents back to Europe. Europe didn't have honey. Yeah. So, so, that, that was last year. Eastern, that was last Eastern year. Europe. Yeah, Eastern Europe. Yeah, yeah. So they had no honey, no whatsoever. So the thing what we need to know about that if we don't have um, the bee population um, very high amount, actually we're going to have a huge problem. So down in Seat, when um, <coughs> all of this problem occurred, they basically um, uh, burned thousands of hives. Um, and the biggest problem is in the most of the storm fruits come from the south, so basically uh, storm fruits are going to be extremely expensive, but we're not going to have any because they couldn't actually go and populating, um, uh, pollinating, sorry, pollinating the, um, flare, uh, the flares. Yeah, so storm fruits, cherries, things like that, you can kind of say goodbye. Almonds, yeah. Native bees also? Australian native bees? Or you don't know about that? Or? Um, I, I don't know too much about them. They just got the uh, uh, European yeah. honey we expecting from them. They do pollination for sure, but the most pollination the European honey bee does. What's the, what's the government imposed on beekeepers at the moment? What are you supposed to do with your hives and bees? Nothing in Queensland, but the news as well. Oh, the, the killing killing all the hives, it's affected by water mites, which is very cruel. Aren't they telling you you've got to label the bees or something? We have to register, so that's yeah. that's normal. Uh -huh. So that's not a problem. So they actually know where you are and how many hives you have. I'm not pretty sure it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So more they know about you. It's you not know. What we really need to do, we really need to stick together as a beekeepers. It doesn't matter how many hives you have. Um, not just um, changing informations, also um, I actually would like to start a group um, on a Facebook and it's local, so I really try to do, it's a local bunch, um, our currency going to be the, the, anything to do with um, honey or anything to do with um, uh, propolis and educating people what is good about it and we're going to have a little stool at the front of our yard, we have a bit of gardening and everything, so obviously we have um, leftovers of stuff like parsley and herbs and everything and put it out there and we're just gonna actually advertising swap it okay so anybody can come anybody can take whatever our leftover so with that we actually start to have a good communication and swapping over and whoever comes in and we want to spread this one as like a like a really good virus so we stick together we help each other put it on, on social media um, and have it out there so that's what basically um, I believe so we, we, we have to do and we can do. Yeah, about well, some interesting stuff about bees. The bees is, it seems like uh, in the hive that's one consciousness because they're not doing any decision without, uh, without the whole, it's like a whole, <coughs> um, it's no, not like a queen is a boss. It's, it's like the whole make a decision at once, you know. They, they, it seems like they know everything, what, how much honey they have, how much pollen they do have, and uh, where to go for my nectar. It's very, very organized, and, and, and it's interesting to see how they're working. And the uh, other day, I just uh, teaching someone and it was next to me, I opened the hive and it was few queen cells. They start hatching one after the other. And uh, what's happening when too many queens, especially virgin queens in a hive, they, they try to kill, just kill one. And uh, I see the ball, when they do the ball, it must be something in there, in the ball. <coughs> they not sting the queen, they warm, warm the queen. So much heat around the queen that's killed the, the virgin queen. Okay, then the other queen, other virgin queen, was running on top of this ball, and I just start thinking how the hell they, they know which one they need to kill and which one they're gonna keep. And that was one of the interesting things I see this show, uh, recently. And uh, 
they are living, you know, they, they're living dark, you know, then they're, they, they're building that cell, which is an hexagon cell, it's only 6.1 millimeter, you know. If you can measure it, you know, it's everything, it's like you know, without tape measure and, and all that. That's the other major things they can do. And uh, just more, more questions if you have, do not think about it, some other stuff. Don't, don't buy Chinese honey. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and you, you know the difference. We, we got some honey in the, in the car. It's actually very, very unusual to have that kind of honey. It's very light. It's different than all the others was before because we usually when we take honey out of the heart and you know, we mix it together, we don't, we don't know where they come from. But because it was missed out so many flowers in the bush, that honey is special. It's something I've never seen it, you know. And uh, we put some in the car, you bring it in. Special and, secret batch. Yeah. And, uh, that's, we want to keep some because we don't have too much of that, but we have, we can share some. This thing was saying if we don't have bees, we got four years to live. But back to the pollination, you know, the bees is so smart. It's never they never cross pollinating anything. If they go to one tree. They stay on, on this tree until the suppliers or planning is over. Otherwise, you know, if, if you've got uh, three trees and they cross pollinating trees to the other trees, then we, we don't even know what's going to be end up in that pollination. That, that's how they, they're really smart to, to do that. I don't know what sort of information they're getting to, to learn how to do, do this, but it's, it's I, I think it's really, uh, things to think about it. Can I just actually say something about um, your, for your question? The answer is we have 22 amino acids in uh, honey, which basically the human body made out of. So if you eat honey, the honey is actually absorbing into your body. It doesn't actually come out in any other way. It builds into your body. So that's why it's actually a huge incredible amount of healing on us. Here's um, high blood pressure. Very good for sexual libidos. <laughs> um, really good for cholesterol, to lowering down your cholesterol, lowering down your um, high blood pressure. Um, extremely fantastic for uh, uh, I need to actually translate it because this is in Hungarian so if I'm look like I'm reading and I don't know what I'm talking about, that's why. <laughs> Extremely good for any kind of infections. Um, burning unit, um, they're using it because for burns are fantastic, the honey. Um, uh, eczema, so if you have eczema, you need to eat a lot of honey and you can put it on all, also uh, outside as well. A very high uh, vitamin B, lactic, um, um, very good for, um, and I'm not climbing anything, but very, very good for uh, cancer. So it's extremely good for cancer. Um, another interesting thing, um, pollen, um, we can actually, we did in one or two this year, especially because it's, it, was, it was interesting this year. Um, but if you uh, collecting pollen, that's good for absolutely everything. It's incredible, and that's like a superfood. Um, so if anybody needs a huge healing, unfortunately the government is um, saying if you um, have um, pollen, we have to put it under um, radiation. A radiation. <laughs> so oh, that, oh, yes. I don't know why we're eating it. Oh, well, that's the reason they give the radiation. Because you can, you can feed, feed other hives with pollen. And that, that, they can't have They think have you can be. protect the other hives from any disease to go in there if you ready it at first. So very good for losing weight if you eat a lot of honey. In my coffee yeah. instead, I swapped it out with yeah. sugar. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we don't actually have sugar at home. Yeah, you, I use it in my right. cakes. Um, cakes. Fantastic cakes. for uh, marinating meat with. Um, so mm, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Incredible. If you yeah, actually put a tiny bit of herbs in there, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, uh, <coughs> so basically it's uh, fantastic for brain activity. Um, they're climbing it if you actually eat regularly a honey, you're not going to have Parkinson's and things like that. So, um, cholesterol, um, all sorts of stuff. So, I really highly recommend everybody 
to eat honey. Um, raw honey. Raw honey. So that's yes. important, raw honey. Not from a shop, sorry. Sorry, raw honey. Yeah. Because raw honey has propolis in there, um, raw honey has pollen, pollen, no, pollen oh, in oh. there. So it's it's all kind of goodies in there. So try to have that one. Be looking for the uh, revenue now just to sell honey to people who would not um, compromise in their honey. Um, because unfortunately, years and years before we were doing um, uh, we do we do salt for for um, wholesalers who were basically um, over filtered it. And I promised to the girls we're never gonna do that. And what happened? The guy actually shut the door. <laughs> And um, we really had to looking for different revenues. Now, one more thing I would like to tell you, and uh, if anybody wants to do uh, beekeeping, please let us know. Alex is actually teaching um, youngsters. Um, we have a couple of people on AR field, and um, we have them with absolutely everything. So they they coming be a beekeepers hopefully one day in in a really big number. AR field is in Brisbane, um, Allen Robes, um, and Green Bank area. Uh, we have a couple of places and another interesting thing my mama said to me uh, one day she said Erica you really need to look outside of the box it is a new which is not a new wave um, but a very old way to actually heal people now um, thousands of years ago they actually built a, a hive a house, a bee house with the hives in there. Alex is going to talk about that one. Just remember, I'm excited to use the knowledge. Um, <laughs> so, this has to be all natural from wood. <coughs> and the person who's actually going in there do have no contact with the bees, and the bees is actually safely going in and out. The bees is actually, like I said, they are perfect creatures. Just remember, 26,000 years DNA never been changed. They are the only one. So with the little wings, you can actually feel the vibration. The vibration for the humans sound is actually equals to the sun. I'm always getting goosebumps when I talk about it. Um, so you can smell the um, incredible um, honey, honey and pollen. pollen and everything, which is heals every single um, uh, uh, lung issues. Fantastic for cancer, every single thing. We do not have any hairs in Australia, but everywhere around the world. In Australia, especially Queensland, when we beekeeping for nine months, so we could actually heal people 24-7. Um, so this is another interesting thing. We just need to build those houses. Alex knows every single thing about how to, so it's safe for people. If you actually spend um, one hour in there, it's, it's <coughs> gives your body a rejuvenation of 24 hours deep sleep. Wow. It's just unreal. It's I have pages of pages of information. They do that in Canada, Ukraine, everywhere in the world, but not in here. But big farmer would probably kill you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they don't want to heal people. No, no. I don't care about them. If we stick together, <laughs> we do our little things together, they can go elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so our problem, I'm, I'm not afraid of anybody because if we do that in like a little cells and we grow as a cell, we're stronger than them. They can go elsewhere. But the house The house can be, okay, so. We think about a little bit bigger, and the reason why because some people has like I don't want to have like one one little tiny stuff because they can feel claustrophobic in there. Um, you can have two to three beds, four beds. I actually have video on that. Uh, I just joined to your Telegram, so I, I can send you videos about how they look like. Um, actually, you're sleeping on top of the hives. Yeah. Oh, oh. Just lying on top of the hive. It'd be like at the zoo or something if you're in an enclosure of yeah, one of the animals, basically, and you're living yeah. beside them. And yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of, but you actually it. don't see that. Yeah, yeah. You just feel the vibration and you yeah. smell it's the incredible honey. Yeah. yeah, and it's safe. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But like I said, the vibration is heals. Um, if you have, you, have you ever heard uh, sound healing? Yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. Um, frequencies. Yeah, yeah. Frequencies. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to that. Fence as well. So yeah. yeah. It's actually in the cosmetic industry. Sure. So if anybody crazy about yes. not to have recourse, 
fantastic for that. I call them B-Tox. Yeah, they're set in top. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we can't have it. And the difference that it can make here is it acts like a natural cortisone. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, I, have an, I had a knee, knee injury. Yeah. And um, bees, again, like I said, they, they're incredible creatures. They find that is actually you've been hurt. Obviously, my body is sensing something. And 99% of you know, I'm not putting my suits on, I'm getting the girls to heal me. Yeah, incredible. Um, it's actually a new thing to do that because basically we're losing the bees. So it's, it's, it's a, a pad you can purchase now. We, 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 with that we're not losing, but they actually can um, sense that. And they're not that angry, but they basically sting that pad, that they not die from that. And sure. that, then the uh, cosmetic industry can use it so we can it also heals psoriasis. Well, good for everything. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely everything. Yeah. When I'm getting actually stung, I thank them. When you what? But I'm getting sting from them, I thank them. You thank. I thank you. you. I, I say thank you because they sacrifice a life, so I can feel better. Working with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Um, what's the minimum space to keep one hive? That's an interesting one, okay? Um, uh, by legislation? <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> Can't even mention that word. Not <laughs> um, basically, uh, you can have a hive at home, but you need to be, and we just talked about that one, you just need to be really aware of that they love lights. So if you have um, a patio outside, and you like, you know, outside, um, you know, the things that turn the lights off, okay? Because they actually come towards the light. I um, ate one, it's not a nice thing to do. It was, and it was in the dark, I didn't see that it was on the food, and I put it in my mouth, I'm thinking, oh, that's really oh, yeah. No, 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 I didn't know that. It's actually, I said, hmm, that's really, oh, hot. Like honey. Yeah, I didn't test it anything, and when I swallowed after that, I couldn't swallow for hours because my tongue was swallowed. Oh, so you need to be careful. So it's it's basically you can keep it. You need to make sure which way they actually shooting out. Um, and um, swimming pool again, they they basically go into the swimming pool. So you need to be aware of that. If you have children at home, good to have calcium shots at home. So if somebody have allergic reaction straight away, you can give it to them because they can die if they what they have allergic reaction know? for the um, poison. Anaphylaxis. Yeah. Some people have allergies. Yeah. 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 Especially when they're vaxxed. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. We always have the shot with us or at home. If anybody have a bit of issues straight away, we can give it to them. We're living in Ipswich City Council area, then uh, we should have two hives in the backyard. And we use them, but we move them out because uh, because they always come to the light. We turn the lights on and on, on, on the pair of all of them. We we couldn't go out at night. Uh, but you, you always find a place in, in in a small backyard as well. Just may may have to put some fence. They can't see the lights or turn in a different way. They're flying out. You can do so many things to keep these. It's it's just it's easy to find a solution where to put it. It's a very good idea in the floor hives. It's, it seems like make it so much easier to work with. But we we need to we need to be a beekeeper as well. We just can't just steal the hive and not checking the hive. You know, and that was mostly the beekeepers' concern when they came on the picture. You know, then you need to go there and find if they're sick or not, if they okay or not. You know, if you don't do that, you know, they can be something going wrong and you don't even realize. But I think you, you're not the kind of man who's not looking into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But some people just, just stealing the honey, just open the wall and put the honey and done, done with the job. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not, a, not a sickness, it's, a, it's just a mind. It's a, it's, it's very tiny and living in a, on the back of the bees and they suck the blood and whistles out. Then they, they can be very weakened 
It all depends how many oral mites in your exactly. hive. Parasite. It's, yeah. it's yeah. all around the world. They have oral mites. Only this country was the latest country, the last so, one. We don't have it. Is it a, is it a bad thing, or is it just wiped up by the government? But they, again, they overreached the killing all these hives. You can you can imagine some old beekeepers with 150 hives, and they did all their lives. You know, they, they can't even get nukes anymore. The, the government came in and just killed them all. Yeah, that's without any question. You know. and there is, is there an alternative treatment against that thing? Well, all around the world they're doing that. You know. yeah. they, they work with the bees with moral mites. You know, even America, you know, they, yeah. they find a way. But the Australian government just yeah. deal with them. Yeah. Yeah. First of, first of all, there's a lot of question in there and it really is making me upset because the bees, uh, in every shore or every port, they are our first uh, security, biosecurity. I'm not pretty sure you know that. Every port has um, uh, beehives. So they're supposed to check them every single day. <coughs> What's happening? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, basically, they start to go down south. Now, that's another thing, like, really, truly, I'm a head, I have a pink head and all kind of stuff. You can tell me all kind of things. But the bees not going to go south when they know that it's colder. This is a time when actually we got the thing that was winter. Winter time, they're not going out to pollinating. They actually survive wound, especially down in Newcastle. It's cold. Okay, so they're just going out, do their business, and coming back. But all of a sudden, they're going down south when air free trees, isn't it? Yes. <coughs> so you can put it together how yes. you would like to do that. So um, the bees don't pollinate in winter? Not really. They, they actually less. just less, really less. Yeah. And then they're not going more than two kilometers <coughs> away. Okay, so they, they pollination is two kilometers. So if they find it in Newcastle, and really quickly, like a couple of months later, not even a couple of weeks later, they actually went down really south, like Sydney and all kind of places. Impossible, okay? And then uh, we tried to, Queenslanders, we tried to stick together and say that we're gonna send um, new colonies down. They didn't allow us. They said for five years they've been banded. So all of those little information just paint a little bit of different picture about um, what they actually thinking. So five years we can't have honey to send down. Five years we uh, they can't bring anything up. So we've been blocked. Now pol uh, pollination we cannot go down. Um, we've actually thinking to go down to Victoria because usually the um, New South Wales from going to Victoria to do the pollination for the fruits and almonds and all of those things. But for us it's actually thousands of kilometers because we have to really go inland. It's not much road to go down. We actually would actually travel 4,000 kilometers to go and have them out. So what, how they did that is incredible. So every single thing, when, and when you're talking to the association, you just, it's, it's a good job. It's a really it's, good job. It seems it's a deliberate attack on the Yeah, it is, it is. Yeah. It is. To make us more uh, dependent on their yeah. shit. Yeah. So the fruits, every um, which way they can imagine, they are trying to kill us. Yeah. yeah that's, I had no idea what they were doing. That's, that's what, what it is. is. That's what we feel. They, they do everything to, to make it harder for everyone. Yeah. And it's happening. But uh, the solution for all that, that kind of group, yeah. sharing information, talking about it, then we can stop it. You know. All the answers are in our backyard. We can grow our own food. We can have a big life. We can blah blah and blah. Share it. And share it. We need to share it. Seems it seems like from all yeah. different angles. Yeah. There, we really need to put our mind away from, from that. Um, uh, much money and all of those things. We really need to have to another. Okay, it's it's really important. We don't know anybody. Um, uh, many beekeepers down there, they actually start to have a group and talking out, but they've been quieted out. There's no mainstream it's coverage. No mainstream. Mm -hmm. I don't think mainstream going to ever. As soon as group slides, yeah. mainstream will cover it. That's why we need to talk again, and you need to spread <laughs> and talk about it so people yeah. have awareness of everything. <coughs> Do you sell pies? Maybe. 
Do we sell high lens? We can. Thank God I'm not jealous. That's his. Um, it's like my baby. It's um, the baby. So he's, no. if you see that you are looking after them and you have a pinky promise, you're not going to hurt the girls. Yes. Yeah. It's a. It, that's his passion. It's incredible what he, he's not a big keeper. It's, he just loved them. It's, it's his passion. So if you actually one or two have wives, and he can see that, like I said, he's teaching people, and and he's more than happy to. Um, he's a wife. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How much? How much um, honey would one hive produce? Good days. It depends on the season. It's, they can produce the fifty kilo to hundred eighty kilo each hive a year. It all depends. If you have a good time or like now, I'm um, not sure what's going to happen at the end of the season, but yeah. The season starts usually July, air season started end of November. Oh. Never happened this. And we're finishing usually the season in um, May. Very interesting when you actually, when we're going out, first we'll be observing how they're flying out. For many reasons, because with the 5G, what we found, um, we actually lost approximately 20 hives, and it did not look any disease or anything, it just, they just disappeared. So the GPS system, no trace, nothing. It's like, it like never happened, it's like, it just an empty box. And um, when, uh, when the 5G was sort of kind of started, and we actually see them 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they're actually going out and the, the new workers, because they live six weeks, I'm not pretty sure how much you know about the bees, and the last stage, they are actually the workers. Okay, so they, they when they're actually ready to go, they're going out and they're just putting their little GPS on. So cute, incredible. So they actually see the, the flares, the colors, they love colors. And that's how they know what is their hive because they're just going back to their own hives, okay? And um, obviously with 5G, that's what happened. They actually can't find a home anymore and they die. Yeah. Um, you can actually get it on YouTube. I, I, I do that in night time, so it's actually give us a lot of energy. We need an energy um, from the old way, so that's one of the great stuff and eat a lot of honey. So, so there's videos on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, sort of yeah. Bees, that that but, duplicate the bees, the recording of the bees? Yeah, right. they actually have videos when you can hear their sounds. Oh. Really interesting. And if you plug it in, it's incredible. <laughs> you still get the same effect? Do you have you, you're getting the same effect. Yeah, I do have that. I can actually look into that. It's incredible. <coughs> Um, so the same sound, but you don't have the smell and you don't have the energies because you just, yeah. Do you know what hertz that is? You said it was the same as the sun. This 528. 528 you figure it out by now. So what we do, <laughs> we're going out in the morning when they just sort of kind of come going out, okay? You can put out your hands and they just landing on you. And you can actually see that. They, they sort of, with their little wings, they just sort of kind of pet you. Oh. It would not hurt you at all. So when people are scared of them, um, they don't know what they're scared of. Oh, it's incredible. So mm -hmm. um, uh, I highly recommend for everybody to, to have this connection with them because that's for life. Okay, um, I'm a hive tree person, but I'm a hive tree person too. I'm hugging them, and, and when you feel the energies, the heat is incredible. They, they're so intelligent. Um, I played it once when we had the hives at home. In the morning, I put one drop of honey um, and a teaspoon, and not much later, the bee came and just got the honey and looked around. I made a lot of gorgeous photos and everything, videos. And um, just before she left, I put another drop in there. She didn't touch it. She just did a couple of circle, left, came back with another friend. Wow. So I did the third drop. Wow. She did, they did the circle, it came back with the free, 
free friends. That need to be every morning, 7.15 arrive for her honey. <laughs> every morning. We got to the point where she just landed on my finger and I was just petting her. Oh, it's incredible. What we're actually doing, um, um, maybe that's a little bit too much for everybody, but basically we, um, we're thanking them every single drop of the honey. Um, I feel like when we, we, we never take more than what we should, and we're always watching them how much we can take. So a lot of people say that you could take more, and I said, no, 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 we, we, we don't rip everything off, because we already feel like we're stealing the honey. If somebody comes to your fridge and take your food, that's what we basically do. Um, so we always leave honey for them, we're thanking them, and um, we asking blessing on them. Because we are feel we blessed to be a beekeeper. It, it is an honor we can be around them. Okay, so it, it's a crazy thing, but it, when we're putting back the hives, and, and that's why it's really good looking because it's like some of them 50 kilo, <laughs> and you have to put it up that high. We actually just tell them, go, 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 go home. So we, we know the beekeepers is actually sacrificing one bee for the honey. We actually have them because I think they give us love and life and we actually um, feel blessed so we give it to them back too. Well, you know I can make good honey Let me come inside